Born January 4, 1943, the American actress and model Sharon Tate was just 26 years old when she became a victim of the Manson family murders, but she was much more than that. The natural beauty and soon-to-be mother was kind-hearted and living her best life when it was abruptly cut short. And today, we're looking back at what she brought to those years she lived, as well as some secret facts about the Hollywood icon that you might have never known if you weren't told. But before we begin, don't forget to watch this video to the end, smash the like button and the red button to subscribe to 7 years of better luck ahead. Done that already? Leave a comment I subscribed in the section below and we will be sure to reply to you personally. Her Early Days Sharon Marie Tate was born on January 24, 1943 in Dallas, Texas as the eldest of three daughters to Colonel Paul James Tate, a United States Army officer, and his wife, Doris Gwendolyn. At six months of age, Tate won the Miss Tiny Todd of Dallas pageant, but her parents had no show business ambitions for their daughter. Paul Tate was promoted and transferred several times. By the age of 16, Tate had already lived in six cities and reportedly found it difficult to maintain friendships. Her family described her as shy and lacking in self-confidence. And as an adult, Tate commented that people would misinterpret her shyness as aloofness until they knew her better. She was a beauty queen. As she matured, Tate was noted for her remarkable beauty, and no sooner she started entering beauty pageants, winning the title of Miss Richland in Washington in 1959. However, Tate had to give up her crown shortly thereafter when the family received news that the father was being transferred to a posting in Italy. But Tate's doll-like beauty would soon earn her attention for the rest of her life. Contract went wrong. Before getting into acting, Tate met and signed a contract with Martin Ransashoff, director of Filmways Incorporated. With Ransashoff's help, Tate garnered minor roles on network sitcoms like Mr. Ed, as well as a recurring part on the Beverly Hillbillies. She was also reportedly up for the role of Billy Joe on the comedy Petticoat Junction, but she was turned down for her lack of self-confidence. However, in 1965, she appeared alongside David Niven in the film Eye of the Devil. She went on to star in five more films, including a role opposite her future husband, director Roman Polanski, in his spoof The Fearless Vampire Hunters. She co-starred with Dean Martin in The Wrecking Crew and had her breakout role in Valley of the Dolls, for which she was nominated for a new Star of the Year Golden Globe in 1968. Time for Romance As Tate's star rose, so did her romance profile. She began a passionate relationship with dashing French actor Philippe Fourquet in 1963 and became his fiancé in a matter of months. Their deep love, however, was also incredibly volatile. They fought almost constantly and struggled under the pressure of their careers. By 1964, they had split. Shortly after their breakup, Tay met Jay Sebring, a sailor turned hairstylist to the stars, and the two dated briefly. Enthralled with Tate more than she was with him, Sebring proposed to her, but going by the lesson she learned with 4K, she said no, stating that she wanted to focus on her career. Though she and Sebring remained close friends even after their romantic split, it was Polanski, director of Rosemary's Baby in Chinatown, with whom Tate ultimately settled down. Tate met her future husband, director Roman Polanski, in the late 60s. Soon after, Tate began lobbying for a role in Polanski's film, The Fearless Vampire Killers. But both Tate and Polanski admitted that it was far from love at first sight. The Shocking Death On August 8, 1969, the promising career of the American actress was abruptly cut short as the soon-to-be mother and four others were murdered by members of the Manson family in the home she shared with her husband. At the time of her death, she was eight and a half months pregnant with a couple's son. It happened late in the night between the 8th and 9th of August 1969, when Tate entertained friends actress Joanna Petet and Barbara Lewis for lunch at her home. Polanski telephoned her that day, as did her younger sister Deborah, who called to ask if she, her boyfriend, and another friend could come by to pick up a saddle Sharon had purchased for Deborah in Europe. However, Tate declined offering to have them over another time, stating she has dinner that evening at El Coyote Cafe with Jay Sebring, Wojtek Frakowski, and Abigail Folger, returning at about 10.30 p.m. 
Shortly after midnight, Tate, along with four others, her close friend Jay Sebring, Polanski's friend Wojtek Frykowski, Frykowski's girlfriend, coffee heiress Abigail Folger, and Stephen Parent, a friend of the estate's caretaker who happened to be visiting him at the time, were murdered by members of the Charles Manson family. Charles Tex Watson, Susan Atkins, Patricia Krenwinkel, and Linda Kasabian. The group, along with Leslie Van Houten, went on to murder Leno and Rosemary LaBianca in their Los Angeles home the following night. In September 1969, members of the Manson family were arrested on unrelated charges, eventually leading authorities to a breakthrough on the Tate case as well. They explained that the motive for the murders was not the identity of the victims, but rather the house at that address, which had previously been rented to record producer Terry Melcher, an acquaintance of Manson. In 1994, the house was demolished and a new house was constructed on the site, with the street address changed to 10066 Cielo Drive. The Lasting Legacy After her daughter's death, Tate's mother, Doris Tate, fought tirelessly for the rights and protection of victims, and in 1982, she helped get the Victims' Rights Bill passed in California allowing for statements by victims about the impact of crimes committed against them or their loved ones to be entered into the proceedings at particular points in the legal process, including parole hearings. She later founded the Coalition on Victims' Equal Rights. U.S. President George H.W. Bush recognized Doris Tate in 1992 for her work, though she died later that year. Patty Tate, Sharon's youngest sister, took up the fight after that, helping to found the Doris Tate Crime Victims Bureau. Sadly, Patty also passed away from cancer in 2000, leaving the middle sister, Deborah, to continue the work. In 2012, the book Restless Souls was published, authored by Elisa Statman, a close friend of Patty Tate. The book contains portions of the unfinished autobiographies of Sharon's father, mother, and sister, Patty. On June 10, 2014, a coffee table book by Deborah Tate called Sharon Tate Recollection was released. It is the first book about Tate that is devoted exclusively to her life and career without covering her death, its aftermath, or the events that led up to it. In the 2016 horror film Wolves at the Door, Tate was portrayed by actress Katie Cassidy, loosely based on the Manson family's murders. And in 2019, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, a Quentin Tarantino film, was released, partly portraying the life of Sharon Tate, played by Margot Robbie. The film provides a revisioning of the events leading to Tate's death by the Mansons, which is prevented in the film due to the actions of other characters in the work. Though cut short early in life, actress Sharon Tate has remained a Hollywood icon for decades, and she will always be on people's minds for her impact on pop culture and films like the cult classic Valley of the Dolls. Enjoyed the video? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe for more of our interesting videos.